Major War Within gameplay changes just went live. Classes, hero talents buffed, all kinds of stuff, and other things will sting. Oh, okay, some nerfs here and there. Let's see what this is all about here from Bellular. We know a lot of changes just went into effect. Let's see if he does a good job here summarizing it all for us. Welcome back to the Warcraft News. Things are changing fast. Now, the good news is this video contains a list of classes, maybe yours, that are getting buffed. So that will be fun. The less good news for some is that the fun police have also showed up. Plenty of people are not thrilled, but to be honest, I still think we're coming out ahead big picture, and I get why Blizzard are doing what they're doing. As an example, just as we figured out that the nerfed Zekfir was an extremely easy way to just get a maxed out great yeah. vault, well, Blizzard stepped in and they changed This was it. funny, man. I literally had the video out too about nerfed Zekfir, and then bam, it's gone. Yeah, of course, you can't fill out vault. You, you honestly could have filled out your vault slots with this Zekfir. Uh, probably in like half an hour, like all the way up to three slots. It was great, and now it's gone. So, starting with this I week's reset, Zekvir will no longer grant Great Vault progress whatsoever. And as annoying as that is, I can totally see the logic. Zekvir's yeah, normal mode is way easier than a regular tier 8 Delve, right? Way easier. And it's literally five times as fast, like 90 seconds a pop, which did make it absurdly quick for filling up your vault. Blizzard's wording is also interesting. They said, we're ending the impulse, which I think just leaks through a little bit of their intent. They know that with Zekvir being this easy, right, to fill up, the vault. If they just let that keep on going, people will become very demotivated to do regular delves. Of course, they've got the problem yeah. that a tier 8 bountiful delve is the best you can do for gear, and that's going to give you champion gear. Yeah, unless here's the thing. I mean, we, we know WoW players are degenerates. If you create a way for them to get gear more quickly or more easily, they are going to not only do it, they are going to destroy that shit. They're going to be constantly doing it. Um, so I, I understand, like, yes, some people are going to be like, oh, the fun police came to town. Honestly, it's just not a good way to play the game. If you're just continually logging on and running Zekvir eight times a week to fill out your vault, is that really fun gameplay? I, no. The funnest part, is, yes, is opening up your vault at the end of the week, but come on. I mean, I don't think that was meant. To, uh, the game wasn't intended to be played that way. Unless you happen to be lucky and get one of those yeah, little extra treasure maps. Big picture, I expect major gearing changes to Delves in Season 2. Those treasure map things show that they're okay with some good gear being there, but I think we all know that getting three slots in your Great Vault at 616, which is in fact better than Heroic Raid, Cutting that in under 20 yeah. minutes with Zach Fear, I mean, that couldn't last without it damaging the integrity of WoW's gear and yeah, loot. Of course. So, I get what they're doing. I'm keen to see how Season 2 changes things. But if you would like hours of the most in-depth lore content, you can join Games today, in fact, with a free trial, and you'll get access to the entire Lore Walking podcast. There are so many episodes. Almost all of them are evergreen. Recently, we solved the Harrenir. We solved the many secrets of the Ringing Deeps. And there's far more over there because you also get our videos early and ad-free. There's a bunch of other things, and uh, our members' Discord, where we all hang out as we work and play the game. There it it's is. It's all quite fun. The link's below. And with that said, let's Man talk about sponsoring some more changes. So, a lot of players were making an absolute killing, well, ish, out of turning their stacks of resonance crystals. Don't know about you, but I've got more of them than I really can use. They were turning those into gear from the renowned vendor, and then they were dusting that gear and just selling the mats, which Damn. basically Blizzard didn't want. They've now changed it. Oh, shit. I missed out on this opportunity. I have so many. I could have done this. Ugh. Shit. Noun gear cannot be disenchanted anymore, fixed. so if you want epics to disenchant, you may as well go and earn them, which uh, I guess means go do some delves. Look, I've always found shuffles to be fun, but again, in this instance, I can at least see their logic. Horn Next, then, some slight fun, please, because what happened during TBC time walking was honestly broken. You see, you could get 500 badges per character for a single dungeon run. Uh, basically, the upfront weekly wasn't made warband wide, but it also wasn't nerfed to reflect how you could now funnel badges to a single right. character because of war band currency transfers. And with the anniversary event coming along with loads of pricey rewards, Blizzard feared trivialization. Many people were able to quickly farm like 10,000 badges. By the way, who, who still needs to farm time warp badges? In all honesty, doesn't everyone have just an excessive amount of these? Now, one thing that Blizzard's doing in the anniversary event is they're basically creating a bunch of uh, time warp badges sinks right, to get rid of a lot of them, because I think a lot of people just have a ton of them stored up. There's going to be a ton of ways to use your Time Warp badges to buy stuff in the anniversary event, which is cool. But I'm, I'm just wondering, like, who's still farming these? You spent them all. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, uh, DJ, then start building them up. I think this uh, this week is uh, Wrath of the Lich King time walking. So go do it all and get some badges, because you'll be able to use them in the anniversary event to get some really cool stuff. 
And if that happened for every other Time Walking Weekly, I well, so many the event of them. would kind of be a bit ruined and they'd end up just damaging the long tail of this reward system. But what they did is not full fun, please. So from now on, the first time you complete the Time Warped Prison Quest, you will get 500 like always. Past that, you'll earn 200 on your alts, and the quest to kill, in this case yogg Saron, because it's Wrath Time Walking, is similar, where you'll get 500 first time, 300 on repeats. Right. That means that it still is farmable across all your characters, but it's not so lucrative that it basically breaks the economy for that feature. And Blizzard's Blue Post even says they want playing alts to be a, quote, modest bonus for this. So yeah, I think right. that's fair. And in the past, they probably would have clamped down on this way harder or just not have made that currency transferable whatsoever, or maybe transferable with a large tax. So we're absolutely coming out ahead. And speaking of time walking, some people have got bad news for the next patch. So the classic PvP rep tokens were going to be on sale, but they're no longer going to be on sale. Yeah. Some people were basically real excited that they could get the Justicar and Conqueror titles yeah, with those not tokens happen. instead of grinding hours. So basically, you're going to have to just do it the old-fashioned way and run the PvP matches over and over. The one thing I will say is it's a lot easier to do that now than it used to be. So go run them, uh, deal with it. Yeah, this was something people were very excited about, and it's not going to happen anymore. And this would have been a really good way to spend your time warp patches of Warsong Gulch battles. And sadly for those people, they've been removed from the classic time walking vendor in the most recent build. Now, the rest of them are still there, just not the PvP ones. I get how that kind of blows, but honestly, for those titles, I think you should actually have to PvP. I, I kind of Quick agree. aside before we get into the class changes. So the next patch's last PTR build added some NPCs to Dornagal, and uh, they're really interesting. They have massive hints to where we're going next. In, yes, in I heard a few goblins have been talking about news of discovery. Do you know what they have found? So the goblins basically sent out an expedition where they found a giant crystal on an island offshore of uh, Kazalgar. And everyone's wondering what the hell that crystal is. The goblins don't even know yet. They basically ended up leaving, but supposedly they went there because they heard a whisper about a crystal. And I don't know if there's a whisper in their head or what. Uh, could this be hinting at Undermine coming in a new patch? We know that this has been a big thing. Undermine's coming. We've talked about it before. Um, or could it be something else? I don't know what this crystal is. Is it the top of the Hallowfall crystal? Geography-wise, I don't think that makes sense. Uh, but... It could be another version or another kind of Halo Fall Crystal. We'll have to see. In the plot, it's kind of exciting. The goblins appear to have found a crystal out at sea, and they're racing the Arathi to build something big enough to fly over there. So it seems we may actually go, like, to the other side of the Undertale. That's right, yeah. The Arathi are also, if you haven't noticed, since, uh, well, not, they're, they're going to. They're back up in uh, Dornagal since we've finished off all the uh, Nerubians and shit. They don't have to worry about them anymore. And they're building a, a an, another Dawnbreaker, essentially to go see what this crystal's all about. See, it's not where I thought we were going. And if true, I mean, man, that's could really be another exciting. piece. Yeah, it also could be coming with the next reset Walker's. is a class tuning pass, and it's honestly a massive one. And thankfully, it is for the most part a big list of buffs to people who are underperforming. Closing the gap between hero towns is clearly the main focus, though. So, Sand Lane, Alraki Reaver, Frostfire, Master of Harmony, Lightsmith, Templar, Mountain Thane, and Void Weaver are all receiving pretty damn substantial buffs. Over for the Warriors, Colossus is a little bit buffed and Slayer is a little bit nerfed. Wildstalker gets a bit of an AoE buff for Feral too, and that's kind of about it for them. Everything else is minor, but the point here is that we're close to the hero talents being an actual choice instead of being a right and wrong answer. As an example, yeah. I thought the Templar was cool, so I just... But here's the thing, like, is it ever really a choice? Like, are, even if the, the percentage difference is, like, 1% difference between uh, playing uh, Sand Lion or something else, like, are we... People are still going to pick the one that parses out the best. It's just how we are. It's just, it's so... I don't think it'll ever truly be a choice, but I do like what Hero Talents have done to the game. To be honest, I've uh, I've enjoyed some of the things that it added. Um, a Reaper's Mark and things like that as a Blood DK is pretty fun to use, and I feel like it's added some cool class identity. Uh, but overall, w will it ever be balanced enough to make it a choice? Uh, probably not. People are just going to pick whatever parse is best. With it in my paladin. Straight up the night that I moved from Templar to Lightsmith, I saw a surge in my DPS. 
and I just did not appreciate how large the balance difference was between them. So it definitely is good it's that that's that happening, it's closer, and it's good yeah. that this is all coming ahead of the reworks of Blizzard are doing in patch 11.0.5. So. That's what's going on there, but there are also some class changes. Vengeance DH has fallen behind a little bit, and therefore it's seeing some survivability and healing buffs. Prop Paladins get some much look, look, I just want to say something real quick. I feel like Demon Hunters are always the quickest to get fixed. I don't know why. I don't know who's at Blizzard working on Demon Hunters, but I feel like they are never shitty for too long. Like, if they ever fall behind, it's like, well, I gotta fix the fucking Demon... Whereas, like, um, a Shaman or something... I don't play Shaman. But I'm just saying, like, they can remain shitty for an entire expansion and no one ever fixes them. I don't know why Demon Hunters get such good cut treatment. I don't know, but I just feel like somebody's always taking care of them on the other side. Healing buffs. Prop Paladins get some much needed damage and healing buffs, which is real nice. Uh, one of our raid tanks was extremely happy to hear Thankfully, that his Shaman's word of glory right may actually risk moving his health bar. Shadow Priests then got a solid and warranted 10% to their direct damage spells. Rogue basically just gets buffs across the board. Assassination's tier set is also Rogue getting buff. It. Subtlety's AoE is getting a big buff via Black Powder, and Outlaw's just getting a flat 4% increase, and then some extra on top with Dispatch and Blade Flurry buffs. That's basically it for the class buffs. But uh, there are the BM Hunters. You guys are the only real target of nerfs here. So Basilisk mm. Caller was an exceptionally strong talent and it's yeah. being throttled. It's a 60% nerf. But the good news is that is offset by buffs elsewhere. So the end result that's expected anyway is a bit of a single target nerf, but yeah. a slight buff to your AoE. The only the, other the percentages have actually come out for this. So the, the, the way the thing is working is you're going to basically be nerfed to about a 4 to 5% um, range in terms of your single target damage, but your uh, AoE is supposed to be buffed by up to 14%. That's what Blizzard's trying to do, so that's really nice for you guys on in terms of like Mythic Plus runs and stuff. I understand you're a little bit sad in terms of what's happening with your single target damage, but I will say you guys were number one looking at the charts from last week before these changes went into effect, and you were number one by a, a pretty decent margin. So if anything, you're going to be like number three or four now in terms of DPS single target, but your AOE is going to be substantially higher. So I actually think overall these changes aren't too bad, but n nobody likes to get nerfed. I get it. Nerf then is an odd one. The bonus armor that augmentation gave to tanks is being cut by one third. They're middle of the and pack now. I totally now. get why. It's actually bad. Only if you suck, Tidewell. Only if you suck. If you're good at the game, you're not. You're still top five by the data. A major limit in pushing Player right skill. now is mobs just pounding tanks into the ground. So with Aug being the only non-healer way to buff a tank in that manner, maybe Blizzard were just afraid of Aug Voker being mandatory for high keys, which again is something that happened uh, during the dreaded god comp of Season yeah, that 2, did happen. at least the latter bit of Season 2 of Dragonflight. And looking at the data, Blizzard are right to be worried. If you look at the Raider IO class populations, it totally does seem that Frost DK, Aug Voker, and Resto Shaman are are the go-tos already. Yeah. And I think that also helps explain the big sand lane buffs for Unholy and the nerf to Resto Shaman damage. And certainly Blizzard uh, props for not nerfing Frost DK. They seemingly balance stuff without making people feel too bad. Frost is doing Luckily, great. Luckily though, I don't have to tell you about the Holy Pals and nerf because for some reason, they had a flat 5% nerf to healing in the patch notes, but um, everybody it. immediately went mad, so they reverted yeah. it. And for yeah. good reason, it didn't really seem warranted. Looking at Holy Pals and performance, they're fairly middle of the pack, so just hitting them with 5% was weird. <laughs> now, they are real strong in mythic, in skilled hands, but they just weren't deserving of nerfs, so it's good that those nerfs did not make it through, especially when Preservation of Ochre just kicks their ass every day of the week. If anyone is to be nerfed, it's probably them. And to be fair, there are some changes to specifics of their healing in Flame Shaper, but nothing that I can see making really a true dent in their sheer level of power. And finally for today, if I was to be a sensationalist, I would say that WoW's experiments are dead, but uh, it's probably not that. What's uh, happened the, is Orlando Salvatore, yeah, the, the man most retired. known for Plunder Storm Antics, has left Blizzard Entertainment after five years. He was instrumental in building WoW Classic during his early tenure at the company and yeah, then moved on to other lead engineers stuff. Most recently, that's things like Plunderstorm and Mop Remix, which were two of the most out there, but I think uh, absolutely just unexpected wins, not to mention the likes of Follower Dungeons. But of course, just because he's the person who publicly is known for those things, it's not like he sat down and coded the whole thing solo. He was part of a team. He's not the only person involved, so I would expect for those things to continue. Yeah, <laughs> they're definitely going to continue. I think they were very successful events. Um, I, I think Plunderstorm's coming back guaranteed. 
Guaranteed we're going to get another season of Plunderstorm, but I hope they do it in a way where they can bring more people back to the game, make it more of a free-to-play thing, uh, because paying for a sub to play Plunderstorm was, uh, you know, it's... It's iffy. You're gonna you're gonna get some people to resub, but only people who played the game before. The way you get new players is you make an event like Plunderstorm free to play, but you give items for the it, like the real game, just like they did. And then people who play Plunderstorm will be like, "Damn, I want to try out the real game." Now they're they're gonna be shocked when they realize it's not a, it's a tab target and not the way Plunderstorm plays. But still, it might be there, you know, a way to pull people in. And usually when there is a lead person like that leaving, there's a bit of a succession plan so that there's somebody to pick up the slack and step in to uh, take his role on whatever team that was. Anyway, till then, you should check out our Zekfir guide because while Zekfir is no longer going to be the fastest way to fill up your great vault, the hard mode rewards are great and the hard mode fight is something that honestly you'll feel just accomplished with when yeah. you're done it. It's an amazing goal to set if you've just not tried harder content in World of Warcraft, the sort of thing where it might take you 50 attempts or 100 attempts but you see when you kill it you're you're just going to feel good and of course the normal mode is the fastest way to farm valor stones my head is about to disappear and it'll be replaced with a link to that video <laughs> yeah and he's right it's still a very good way to get valor stones and um it's it's very mage tower-esque in that when you do finally start to get it uh, yeah, sure, it feels good. It's a good way to learn your classes, too. If you if you don't know how to play your class, maybe you're new to the game, too. It's a great way to learn how to do a lot of the abilities that your class has and use its full utility kit. A uh, nice uh, video here from Belular summarizing everything that's happening in the game.